I don't think anyone's ever mentioned where the actual police station is. Again. Yeah. I'm I'm sure someone knows. I, I would hope. I think if they know they're a cop, they're an alien cop. All the cops are aliens. I mean... The resource officer at our school was 70 and he smoked cigars in the boys' bathroom. Uh, <laughs> um... Let's... Uh, let's play, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for derailing everything so hard. <laughs> no, you're okay, it's just, uh... Free game chatter. Yeah. We are getting a very late start, too, so... Yeah, it's... it's okay. How long can everyone go tonight? Uh, as long as it takes. I, I'm, I'm good. pretty good for a while. I don't think we'll be playing for super long. It's just I know we have a late start, so if yeah. people need to go, I mean, as long as it doesn't take five hours, I think I'll be fine. Yeah, we won't play past midnight. I doubt we'll play past eleven, maybe. Um, but uh, God, I'm still reeling. Last time we played, <laughs> um. You guys uh, stopped at Embermore, learned that I was under the control of the Collector and all of Aster Technologies. Zeke, shut the fuck up, please. Um, did some recon, uh, learned that there are several thousand clones of different people within Virtue and a number of other units within Alavastic Technologies, including Ellis. Ellis doesn't know if he's the original anymore. Um, you guys went to the port after that, after deciding not to uh, engage everyone in Nevermore. Um... Decided to make a deal with a half dragon known as the Count of Fives, a one of the biggest smugglers. Though he is currently the biggest, since the Nezokir are currently out of com uh, commission, with Olesa being under quarantine. Um, the deal was to meet one of the dragon ranges, ranges known as Desolesa, and let her know that Embermore needs her help. Uh, in return, you guys would get a very quick boat ride out, and we left off with you guys starting that travel. Um, I'm going to change maps and put you guys on the world map real quick. Also, Ellis and Stray do the sex. That was an RP, but yeah. It is the under the pants dance. The under the sheets boogie. Twister without the map. Uh, oh, hey, that's a familiar map. I had to uh, go through it. Scroll over. Yeah. The portion of the map that loaded at first made it just look like Africa and I was very confused. Those people don't exist anymore. Um Currently. So you guys have uh let me move you guys over so that way you can see where you're going. You guys left, you guys left Emrimor here, and you are, where's my there? There we go. You guys are going around this peninsula and up towards these, this forested area here, 
or no, those are hills. This uh, desert area up here. So, I know a few people wanted to do things. Namely, Jerry, Ellis. But does anyone want to do anything during this trip up to the Desolessa Range? Tycho's gonna meditate. And Ellis is going to accidentally bother him. What kind of meditate? Chillax, calm down, try and see if he can figure okay. out whatever pack magic thing is after he has the whole speech with uh, Ellis. Okay. Um. Jerry, you bother Psycho first. Yep. Uh, he knocks at Tycho's door. Tycho opens the door a moment later. Hello. So I finished the spell. That was really quick. It, it didn't take long. I, I think I knew most of what needed to be done. However, the problem being is that I can't cast it alone. Which is where you come in. So the way this spell operates is that while I cast, you are also casting, and basically the room where we are becomes your mind and we walk through it it's 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 simple yet not okay will there be any problems if someone enters or will it be you just lock weird? the door it might be weird. I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. How much... What will it take? Well, um... Considering, uh, we can't exactly get herbs and whatnot on this boat. It'll take 15 gold. As in 15 coins or 15 dollars? 15 coins. Okay. I have that. Wonderful. Um, when do you want this to happen? Screw it whenever you're ready. Alrighty. I can start immediately, I just need to change clothes. You might also want to get comfortable, because this casting can take a while. Okay. See you in a few minutes. Alrighty. The two of you redress and reconvene. <clears throat> um, Jerry, roll me no, Tycho, roll me a wisdom. Check. 
Yes. Noted. Okay, continue. So yeah. Uh, oh god, I forgot his name. Ellis returns, and yeah, they start the casting after doling out the money, of course. Um, Ellis, you go ahead and roll me a wisdom check, too. Not necessarily for the same reason. Okay. You have thought about the essence of the spell well enough where it doesn't take you as long as it potentially could to cast the spell. Um, it does still take about an hour worth of casting, but it's not the two hours that it could potentially be. So, you cast the spell with Tycho's help, and the room around you is there, but it's not physical anymore. It's like everything around you is ethereal and moving. Um, there are certain details that go in and out of place. Roll intelligence checks. Ellis, you realize that this is literally just Tycho's Zeke, please, is literally just Tycho forgetting certain things about the room. Certain details go in and out of place as he remembers them. But instead of it just being the uh, train cart, or the room, uh, the room of the boat, where the exit normally is, is just a very long hallway. Lots of doors on either side, and it looks as though the doors aren't necessarily doors themselves, but entrances to different memories. If you guys continue further down this hall, the more recent memories that are closest to you begin to turn into memories of Tycho's past. Of your past, Tycho. You see the day that the Red Beam appeared in Dry City, meeting Lenore and Stray for the first time. You see, um,. One of the few times that you ambushed a number of Kessman raiders. And then you reach the point of you being in Vestret, which is where you found Sol. Mm -hmm. A lot of the memories here are distorted. In the same sense that they are. Like, you would have forgotten the minor details of your boat, uh, your room in the boat. But this is missing entire chunks. And you think back on it, you don't remember a whole lot of what happened after you stole a soul. You travel further down this line, and you get to a memory where it's just you lying on the ground, staring up at the sky between two very uh, tall skyscrapers. You see that soul is in your hand, and you don't remember this in the slightest. You're bleeding out. A large 
paw on the side of your stomach. Roll wisdom check, Taika. In front of you, or above you rather, up in the sky, a small glimmer of light glows bright, almost blinding you. And you hear a very quiet, very distant voice. It says, I can help you. You ask how, and it says by both letting you live and giving you power. You're silent for a few moments, contemplating on whether or not you are actually dying. And figure, if you are and this is just a fever dream, there's no harm in accepting it. You accept, and your vision fades, and their memory replays itself. Though this time, you don't have a hole in your stomach. As a matter of fact, there is no wound there at all. You had just fallen off the side of one of the buildings. You're lying on your back. You sit up very quickly, looking from side to side of the alleys before bolting in the other direction, away from the Rivar that are currently coming towards you. Then the memory does finally fade. From then on, the memories are spotty. Not necessarily just days go by and you don't remember much of what goes on. It's about a week or so living in Vesser and running away from the Rivar before the memories finally smoothen it out. You can remember more of what you had seen that day or during that time. It's not as if whatever had granted you the abilities and had helped you live was controlling you. It was just reacclimating to your psyche and acclimating to you to who you are as a person but along with that had drained some of your ability to remember of what went on during that time as you look away from this memory you can see the very tall suited man with a sh uh, shifting face Red crown, red crown hovering above his head. He just looks at the two of you and nods. Very interesting set of circumstances. Not quite your voice, <clears throat> friend. Oh, me? It wasn't I who gave you your pact magic, it was someone else. I just merely strengthened your bond. Though, if you would like me to give you abilities, I can certainly do that. Though you'd be, to put it frankly, mine and mine alone.
I'll stick to how I am for now. Thank you. Of course. I wasn't quite expecting to see the two of you wandering around in memories. He looks to you, Ellis. Your idea? Yep. Well done. I do my best. Well, you'll excuse me. And he walks past you, and as he does, he just sort of just scatters into ash. That's new. <clears throat> Has he been in here long? Mm. Kinda hard to say. Giving the creator a place to converge is odd. It's mostly at his discretion. I see. Did that help you? The memories, rather. Did that clear anything up for you? A little. Not sure, uh... what I expected, but at least I know uh, if the loan is predatory, it was worth my life. The list just nods. <laughs> Perhaps uh, when you are able to remember, you may find even more about yourself than you may have forgotten. Perhaps. Memories are weird things. Indeed. Shall we leave? I don't want to really stay here long. I'm not sure how long the spell really lasts. I just estimated two hours. Okay. Lead the way. You guys walk back to the boat room, and as you do, the hallway behind you just slowly fades into darkness. And then, as you guys make it back to where you once sat, the room becomes corporeal again, and the long hallway is nowhere there. No longer there. <clears throat> I thank you for your interest. And your effort. No problem. Uh, Ellis just gives a slight bow before he leaves. Alright. Take a Roll me a charisma check. Damn it. Bad rolls. Bad rolls. Nat two. Okay. Anyone want anyone else want to do anything? Uh ye. Don't we have to make the check for the artifacts again? Fuck. You guys want to describe on Galkara. I'm glad I remembered it this time. And yes, uh, everyone 
roll either con or a spell save DC. Or spell Damn it. check. That's a fail. It's a con check, not save, right? Uh, correct. Yeah, con check. Okay, I was going to say. Because if it's a save, I don't know which one to pick. Back. Everyone. No, it's kind of yeah. lower. Yeah. Ten succeeds. Anything above ten also succeeds. Okay. Nine or lower. Yeah. I got it. Okay. So, only stray. Tycho. <clears throat> oh, and Tycho. Zeke, please. Um, you guys also wanted to scry on. Scry on Tycho. Yes. That. Um. He needs to make a wisdom save, and he has minus ten to it, I think. Yeah. Uh, if Lenore casts it, he should also have disadvantage, because I cut into him. I know he's a humanoid. Yep. The save is twenty. He has disadvantage. And minus two. I think we did it, fellas. I certainly so, hope so. <laughs> minus ten is eight. So that's failure. Um I forgot I had uh push talk on it he fails. Yeah, he, he rolled it. So he literally cannot succeed. Yeah. Um Let me just see if he up real bad. You rolled a two. So, you guys can see where he is. This is retconning a little bit further back as I had forgotten it last session. So, just so you guys are aware. Um, you guys are all taken out of probably the train at this point in time and are taken very, very far north, even past the best road, into a patch of dead woods. And then you guys, your guys' vision is taken past the ground and deep beneath it. And what you see underground can only be described as a utopia. A very vast green field with white flowers blooming all over it. A number of small buildings that can only be described as military barracks of some degree. A very large building that appears to be some sort of headquarters. A very large number of children just playing throughout the field uh, with a number of soldiers it seems to be training or even just teaching them. Among them, you can see, uh, you can see Galkara. You also see a man with a ravaged face. Just kind of decrepit, just very torn apart. Ellis, you know this to be Vandalisk. He, Vanderlisk, and Alabaster appear to be having a conversation. The conversation entails something about fooling the rest of you. Taking one piece off the board for them, for the time being, until they really need it. Until then, Gokara is to be working near the killer's rail where there he will begin working on something known as the dander stray the 
very few words are exchanged to gleam anything about what it might be. And before too long, the vision fades as Galkara begins to leave the conversation. And that's all you guys get. And there wasn't the same uh, situation as with the collector, whatever his name is? Doesn't appear to be. Don't tell me. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. You're good. So, moving past that and going back to the present timeline. Guys, you're still on the boat. Anyone like to do anything else while on the boat? Yeah, I'm gonna go see Korik. Okay. Oh boy. Knock, knock, bird boy. She doesn't say that, but was out of character. <laughs> I'm pretty sure bird boy is probably a slur. Yeah, that that would not be a good thing for you to say. I uh, guess I'll open the door. Hi, can I come in? Uh, sure. Yeah, what's up? Perfect. She shuts the door behind her. Give me the continuance. <laughs> I don't have it. Out of character, he does in fact have it. No. Mm -mm. In fact, he does not. He gave it to Cherry and Jane when they had the motorcycle ride. Yep. So Cherry has it. But would he know that? Or would she know that? Yes. Well, she can kind of assume. Uh, it was pretty plain view mm. when you gave it to Cherry. Yeah. So. Yeah. He just didn't know if you'd got it back. <laughs> You're not even going to bother denying that. I'm not going to confirm it either. You told me to give it to you. I can't give you something I don't have. Huh. <sighs> If you think that Cherry's got it, you're more than welcome to go knocking on her door. I think we both know how that'll end. Perhaps I'll do just that, and she does. She leaves knock knock Cherry. Cleo, you are muted. Yeah, you're muted if you don't know. Hi. <clears throat> so, the no one knocks on Cherry's door. Yes. She opens the door and she raises her eyebrow. Hi, so, yeah, I need that glass pane you took from me. Mmm, mmm. Eat my entire ass and all. Okay, you see, here's the thing about that. First, take me out to dinner. Uh, secondly, I don't need to keep it. I just need it for a little bit. You can literally keep your gun right against my head for the entire time I'm handling it, if you wish. Cherry, Cherry, like, leans against the door frame, and she's, like, blocking her... She's got the door pulled up to her to block the doorway, and she's like... <laughs> You know very well by now that I never buy dinner for my date. That's fair. <laughs> so how about the whole I get to check out the pane of glass, you get to put a gun to my head, and if I do anything, you get to pull the trigger? Like I said, eat my entire ass. And that'll get you to let me use the pane? 
Holy shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's... That was, was good. That. <laughs> that was good. No one saw that coming. Not at all. I certainly didn't. No, Lenore. <sighs> Look, you'll benefit too. I'm checking it out to see why our artifacts are behaving the way they are. You, uh, think that's got something to do with it? Maybe not the pane of glass itself, but the continuance certainly has. And it might help if I was able to consult what I assume to be a standard piece of solidified continuance in my research of the current artifact. If I step out of line, all you'd have to do is pull the trigger and I'd be dead. <laughs> Cherry looks Lenore up and down. All right. All right, fine. But. But if you are even so much as slightly shifty, I am going to paint your brains Understood. against the wall. Okay. This is going to be fun. Give me one second. Very well. She just sort of waits outside the door. You should be. You know, the thing is, the whole scene with Cherry in the train when she shot Lenore's legs, I was like, oh, I have no way to get out of this. And then I realized that, I, and then afterwards I realized I can cast Misty Step at will without, like, without any components. And I'm like, well, that would have made things simpler. <laughs> In the short run, but... Yeah, but see, here's the thing. If you've got a gun to your temple, Misty Step isn't fast enough. Probably not. But she didn't not have the enough. gun. She didn't have the gun to her temple any time during that. That was when she just went across the room. Right, but in True. this situation, she will. Oh yeah, I'm not it's saying not that would work in this situation. I was just saying I realized I had an out in that one. Yeah. Anyway, so Cherry goes gets the goofy box and. uh her big, big gun. And you do so? So where do you want to do this? I mean... I don't care. Here works just fine if that's okay with you. That works fine with me too. And I got my big gun ready. Yeah, you do. Lenore's just going to gesture, like, asking if she can enter. Yeah, yeah, come in. Perfect. Are there, would Cherry have, like, a desk in her room? 
Uh, these aren't as big as the train rooms, so probably not. Dang, she needs a flat surface to sit things on. Or at least she'd want one. Just use the floor. That's for peasants. You want to do it, like, on the goddamn dining table? No, she'll just use the bed. <sighs> Lenore sits on the edge of the bed and just... I'm going to lift my artifact, Lodea Weta, and place it on the bed. Do not shoot me. And she does so, she just puts Bladea Wet on the bed in front of her. Now, I'd like to have a piece of continuance, if that is okay. Cherry hands over the <laughs> thing. She's, and she, but she's, as she does so, she says, any shifty business. <laughs> Understood. Lenore mumbles something under her breath before unlocking it, and nothing goes wrong, and she just takes out the pane of glass and sets it up next to the gun, and then she's just gonna experiment and tinker and figure out if she can't find a way to do stuff. No, you're not. Roll a constitution saving throw. Me? Yep. Whoa! <laughs> Nervous. I didn't do it. Look, all I'm saying is if something goes wrong here, Lenore has made every attempt to behave herself. So, I Jerry, very specifically didn't do it. Quark did not do this. It is not a bullet in the center of your head. So, Jerry, it could have been. As you're watching Lenore remove the piece of glass, she just grabs it, and her whole body goes limp. Unconscious. I swear to God, if she shoots Lenore for this. Can Lenore. I, like, put... Yep. I'm gonna, like... You know when there's like a bug and you put the glass over the bug or put the paper underneath to pick up the bug without touching it? Right. I could do that with the continuance shard. You hear a voice as you do that. This won't affect you. I can, I can touch it? I said I would make her, I would make sure she doesn't do anything stupid again. <laughs> gotcha. Lenore. <laughs> to you, you don't fall unconscious. You're just not in the room anymore. You're Bob. in a bar. And sitting across from you are both your lovers. But, uh... Though they're not as you remember. They are decrepit, rotted. One of them is just rotted through the core. One eye is just hanging by like a smidgen of muscle outside of his skull few teeth missing. The other is essentially just half a body. You don't know where his legs are. Pieces of bone are sticking out of his ribcage. And they appear to be talking to you as normal, drinking their own drink. And one of them looks to you and says, How are you, Lenore? I feel like to think I'm doing reasonably well. We very much have she, she waves at the bartender. Sapphire Martini. 
you look at the you look at where the bartender is supposed to be, and you see this suited man, shifting face, red crown hovering above his head, and he just leans in. Well, is this just a party? So why have you two decided to visit after all this time? Purely to tell you that what you fear most is going to come and get you one day. I very much doubt that. Who said that? Was it the one she killed or the one she killed for? The one she killed for. You know, Lenore. You do. I'm sorry, go on. The one who you killed for, the half-bodied one, lifts itself onto the table and just kind of, with its hands, walks over to you across the table. You've lost sight of what you wanted to do. And what did I want to do? To bring us back. I need more time to do that. This is the only way I'm going to get it. There are far other, far more, less bloody plaz you could have chosen, Lenore. Yes, that's the way it always was, wasn't it? You always encouraged me to be a better person than I was. And yet here we stand. You're half a body. And I'm one of the most successful women currently living. Success has Where did it go wrong for you? He just starts screaming and it's not an angry one it's one of pain it fills the entire bar can I have you roll another uh, constitution saving throw I'm slow. You're good. And so is my internet. Also fine. Or less fine, but that's not your fault. 15. You cover your ears just in time before it feels like the eardrums are going to pop. Just from how loud this scream is. And then it stops. And he looks at you again. It's just this truly dead look. And you can't quite hear it because there is a ringing in your ears. But you do understand what he says. Continue on like this and you will end up just as me. Because he's, he's still on the table, right? Yes. She's just going to, like, stroke his, like, decayed, horrific head, you know, like one would, like, when you're trying to calm down someone. Mm -hmm. I am yours until the end of time. Just tell me what you think I need to do, and I will do it. Be better. Be what you were before money got to your head, and power, and this insatiable greed for what you want, and be better. Allow 
tiny little girl living on the street, avoiding the debt catchers. I can't go back to that life. I'm not saying going... I'm not saying to go back to that. I'm saying use your money for something other than yourself. Use your money and your power to do good. And not to become more than what you already are. If you get better, you will be better. You still never answered my question. Why? Why now? Why not at any time in the thousands of years I spent trying to find you? Because we can never reach you. You got too far away. Hmm. Too far away. I suppose that perhaps it was mutual. I've spent a thousand years thinking that you left me, but it's possible we both left each other. I didn't make much of an effort to make amends until I knew you'd already passed. And by then it was too late. I don't think she's going to give it all to Cherry. Say that again? Uh, the last part I just said, I don't think she's going to give it all to Cherry. Oh, yeah. The lever speaks out again. The continuance is not the answer. There are others out there who can get you what you want. But they're not going to give it to you if you continue down this path. And what should I do then? Grovel like a dog in front of these pitiful excuses for God? That is exactly your problem, Lenore. You consider no one your equal. You were always my equal. Or have you forgotten? And as your equal, I'm saying there are others as your equal as well. No. No one will ever be like you. Get better and you will have me again. I... I cannot promise that I will succeed, but I can promise that I will try. That is all I ask. Do you know why the others are here? She gestures to her husband and the barkeep continuance shenanigan man. I believe our host wanted to teach you a lesson.
your host. I am to take it you're referring to the barkeep. Not necessarily. There is no house to where us souls rest. But I mean here, this bar. He doesn't play fair, quite honestly. But he knows what to do. Would you very much mind giving me a moment alone with this Sparky? Of course. Thank you. He hobbles back across the table, landing with a pretty solid dunk, even though he's pretty decrepit on the chair, and picks up his glass and drinks it, falls out of his ribcage. That's valid. As she's gonna get up and go to where the barkeep's standing. Barkeep is just still leaned in, watching the conversation. Watches you approach. Doesn't move. Yes. Why? For someone as intelligent as you, as you, you know nothing. I respect your ambition. But what you want is not what you will get. At least, should you continue down this path as your once lover said. Is it so wrong to want it, though? No. But... As I stated before, you know nothing. And you do. I certainly know more than you do. No. I think you know different. You do not know more. Would you like to know what you will receive? What I'll receive if I do what? Try to steal the continuance. What will I receive if I try to steal the continuance? Roll constitution saving third, Ronar. He does nothing. He just looks at you. After a second, he gives you a brief nod. And then there is this absolutely searing pain that just so swells. That's not a four, that's a 21. She has advantage. Um, for what? Constitution saves. That is true. It still that's happens. That's a nat 20, my boy. It still happens. You're not as in much pain. As in... In much, as much pain. There we go. Yeah, I had forgotten. I granted that. There's the searing pain that wells throughout your body, and you look down at your hands, and your fingernails start to bleed. You can feel liquid running down through your ears and past your eyes, and down your nose, and you realize that this isn't blood. 
This is the very magic seeping out of your body. And as it leaks from you, you can feel just your body draining. And it is quite possibly, even though you are managing to bear it at least a little bit, it is probably the worst sensation of pain that you have ever felt in your lifetime, your very, very long lifetime. And it's just sucked from you to the point where once there is just finally a puddle of this green bluish liquid that seems to almost it almost seems to have an aurora borealis in it in and of itself but it's just a liquid and you collapse and this liquid almost becomes amorphous and just slides away from you and up the counter towards the red crown, the, uh, the creator. And it attaches itself to him. You'll be left without power. I had it, though. For just a moment, I was magic. For just a moment, I could have done anything. No amount of pain. No amount of loss would deter me from my goal. All I need is that moment. I gave you your warning, Lenore. As did your lover. If you continue down this path, I will be seeing you elsewhere. Somewhere where you won't like it. I would rather face hell itself than stand here in the in your empty promises, the light of a sun that cannot chase away the chill. I will do what I have to. So you think my promises are empty? You've no intention of granting me what I want. And what makes you say that? What's up? Because what else do I want but to continue? And that is yours, and yours alone. I am no worse no, it's okay. than that. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. I, I am no worse than the man that stole it from I you am originally. I the game, though. <laughs> Why then should he squander his ability for so long while I must scrounge and study and debase myself in front of some cybernetic dwarf for a scrap of power. Because you don't deserve it. And he does. Certainly more than you. What do I do that disgusts you so? Was I not one of the first to learn to use the continuum? Am I not 
Am I not among the most ardent and well learned of any cast? Do I not try the hardest? I am as well derived as he. It was never about your ability. Or the time you spent. You have no strength of character. You reanimate people's loved ones and treat them like dolls in order to get them to do what you want. I will hear no lectures on the subject of characters from one like you. The, uh, the one you killed for speaks up from behind the table. He gave us a choice. Lenore. Who tries to speak to you? He gave you the choice, yes. Did you never ponder why? Why now? Why you and not someone else? Why you and I? And not someone who has suffered a loss just as great, or even greater, is because he could not use them. And that is the truth, whether he chooses to admit it or not. I will very plainly admit it. I don't intend on using you, I intend on getting rid of you. Whether it is by deterring you or killing you, Lenore, you will. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the option other than kill. By deterring you or killing you, you will not have the continuance. And for the slightest of chances that you do, you will not live. I play fair. Mistake. I play by rules. You don't play fair. You know you don't play fair. They even told me as much. She gestures to the corpses. We have very different definitions of fair. You know, for a long time, I regarded the creator of the continuum as the greatest being to ever live. I read everything I could find on you. But now, when I look at you, I feel nothing but contempt. You are as a petulant child who has lost their toy, unwilling to, unwilling to let any others enjoy themselves when you yourself are unable to. Even if you choose to kill me, do you not see that that would that, that would just grant me what set me on this path in the first place? Again, I am fair. You'll get what you want. In the end, whatever end it is that you say choose.
I think this conversation is over. Unless you or one of them has anything else to say. You wake up on the bed, collapsed. Pan of glass still in your hand. Er, no longer in your hand. Cheryl. Yeah, sugar. Shatter it. Get out of my room. And she does. She takes Bladea wood. E or an interaction where Lenora wasn't a total monster for the entire thing. Yep. Mm hmm. Anyone else want to do anything? Can I ask him what the fuck Vandalisk is up to? He's not entirely sure. Uh, cool. What he does think is happening, though, is that he is essentially making something that could be an artifact that is affecting all other artifacts that have already been made. Sorry, can you repeat that? He believes he is making an artifact that is affecting all other artifacts. He can just do that and he can make new artifacts. While he is in the control of the continuance, he can. Tits. There is someone else who can know. Someone I met a very long time ago. A friend of two of the surviving members of what Vanderlisk had done before. Okay. His name is Yuri Nanota. Okay. So is this like a, a, a meat fuck or like a, an avoid situation or kill at all discretion or what? I haven't spoken to him in quite some time. But I can tell you for sure that he has no love for Vandalisk. Oh, hey. Something we have in common, then. He and the other remaining member... Well, he was nearly killed, the other was killed. We're both... the original magic casters of the Continuance. Cool. So, if I ever sense him near, I will tell you. You can meet him whether or not you... You can decide whether or not you would like to meet him when I tell you. Hey, I can build a solid friendship on a foundation of mutual hatred for somebody else. You know, that's in my tool set. That's something I am very capable of. I believe a few other of your friends are capable of doing so as well. He runs a group called the Crimson Lance in Maroc. The, cr the Crimson what? Lance. <laughs> Alright. Well... We're passing through Maroc, right? Yes, that's the city before Legacy. Right. Hey. Maybe I'll drop in. Say hi. 
let's see how the old friend is. He is... To put it frank, dangerous. But, as you said before, he has a very mutual hate for Vanderlisk, so I believe should you mention that, things will be not necessarily cordial, but even. Hmm. All right. Yeah, pretty much. Just lead with that and see what it goes. Um, yeah. Anyone else doing anything? I think I'm good. You don't want to do the memory thing on straight? Oh, I thought it was just a once per day thing, but okay. Oh, yes, it is once per day. Never mind. Um, once, twice... Three times. You guys travel for a number of other days, going up to the Desolessa Range before you guys park your happy little butts right about here. Need to change the music. The Dragon Ranges, none of you, except for the people from Dry City, Stray, Lenore, and Tycho, have ever really gotten the chance to see the scale of the Dragon Ranges. They are huge, to say the least. The tallest of mountains are taller than Mount Everest. And very faintly, you can see how from either the side or up above, they are shaped as a very incredibly large dragon's body. And you're not even within, I'd say, 100 miles of it, and you can just feel the sheer sense of scale that this dragon's body is. You guys are let off the boat in a, a very small, what seems to be essentially a fishing town um, that gets by on its own. There are very few people here. It's maybe 100, 200 people tops. Um, a number of walls surrounding it. Not the kind of walls that you'd see around a city or even the towns like Claypool or Oceanstall, but... Uh, they're walls that do well enough against smaller creatures, and they're not necessarily metal, so they don't attract metal eaters. Really, the biggest thing that they have to fear out here are bandits. Specifically, the Kessmen. You guys are all let off the boat. Um, the crew stays on. The skulls come off with you, leaving the Astraga on, on the boat. And they say... Um, or Dutch, the leader of the skull, says, I can send maybe two others with you guys to go and see the, the dragon, but the rest of us should stay here. I don't necessarily trust this hodgepodge setup of a town to uh, keep their hands off the Astraga. So... I could probably send Osmond and V with you. Any problems with that? I yes. genuinely... <clears throat> listen, if the mountain decides that we look like a yummy snack, 
I don't think having two more people is gonna even matter. So, I mean, do what you want, right? Frankly, I'm only letting out the offer. I don't want to do it, but uh, I figure it would be a decent gesture. Appreciate that. Obviously, we can keep the kids safe. And Nor is just like, I'm staying the fuck here. Okay. Maybe... Hey, Jane. Hmm? Yeah? You know how to shoot? No. I know how to hold a knife. That's cool. Maybe you should teach Jane how to, you know, so we can give her a pistol and... I mean, kids out here gotta defend herself, right? Absolutely not. The I vote the yes. Gifted clairvoyant. We must school her in the ways of the arcane. It's not like right, she no, can't I'm, learn all of those school things. school her in how to be a clairvoyant and also how to work a pistol. Um, That's fair, I suppose. Dutch kind of makes a gesture to keep your voices down. Maybe not call her a clairvoyant in the middle of nowhere. Fair point. I will personally reanimate this entire town so I can kill them again if they hurt her. Stray seconds, that. Uh, Ellis cocks his head and gives a slight nod to, to Lenore. Anyways, if you guys don't particularly care, I'll keep all the skulls with me, including Jane and Norum. I mean... I guess it's up to the rest of you guys. Do you want back up? I mean... I don't think we'll have to worry too much. Are the... Dragonborns coming with us? No. I don't think we'll need more combat prowess. As long as we're not stupid. That's on you, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I second that. I'm absolutely- ready to go. Alice, don't try to get any more monster dick, and I think we'll be fine. <laughs> I, um, anyway, let's go. Um, you guys, as is custom, as you guys begin to leave, even though the townsfolk don't know you, they do give you enough water worth a week, um, as well as food. Oh, shit. And that's free. Like, they just give it to us? Yeah, it's free. If, it's poisoned. No, it's, uh, all of you guys would know this, even if you've been, even if you've left a town, a city once. Anytime someone leaves a town and they're not sure when they're going to be back, they are given free food and water. Oh. It's customary among all the smaller towns. You'd get That's more, you, you'd get more if it was, uh, towns like Claypool or Ember Summit or the larger towns outside the cities. Okay. We thank them graciously. I kind of shoo you. <laughs> like, like, here's some food and water. Get, leave. Go die. Stay away. <laughs> yeah. Go away. Yeah. Um. Actually, everyone, roll inside checks. That was for the uh, the days. Artifact roll. Oh, uh, yeah. What'd you say? Insight? Yep. Insight plus artifact. I think I probably just rolled intimidation by accident. I'm glad those are both wisdom based. Yeah, it's a no on the insight and the constitution check. Cherry got no shit and hasn't got a gun. What a mood. Uh, I don't say this enough, but I love Cherry. Uh, Lenore also doesn't have. Oh boy! Lenore also doesn't have a gun, so. Uh, I I love Lenore. Just yeah, just saying. Lenore. Lenore's very good. Um. Go stinky bix. Fifteen twenty-five. 
What That's a 14 and an 11. Okay, so <laughs> the folk around here are... Uh, this is for the Americans of the group. You know how if you ever go to a town, like a super backwoods town, and everyone just kind of gives you a weird look? This is that town. Mm. Oh, so my experience in Virginia. That's okay. That's wonderful. It's not necessarily like I'm going to stab you in the neck when you're not looking kind of look, but it's definitely like we want you in and out as fast as you can fucking go. Like, they don't want you here. They don't want strangers here. Like, you're new around here and that makes us uncomfortable. Yes, exactly. Everyone knows everyone and if they don't know someone, they kick them out, basically. <laughs> God, I hope not. It is not Salem, no. It is not that fucking insane. <laughs> but you guys head off into the desert. It will be... From where you guys are on the beach. How fast would you guys say you would be walking? Fast pace? Sure. It will take you guys about three days to get there, and then three days back. So. On the first day, it is fucking hot. It's not as bad as it would be on the salt plains, but it is in the middle of a desert. And thankfully, you guys are all pretty used to the heat of Pangaea, um, especially within the cities, but even now, it's something else to behold, just walking through a fucking desert with nothing. Um, including your armor and some of your gear, it is a bitch and a half, to say the least. Me too. Bitches, Lenore's like two bitches. Um, but that night, as you guys begin to settle down, it drops well below freezing. And... Ellis. All right. Here. You remember way back when you first cast uh, the Wheel and Woe spell. I forget what it's called. The, uh, uh, the, mm, divination? Yes. No, augury. Augury, no. yes. No, it is augury. I think. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. As well as when you met Odysseus, the It's Augury. Um the black the blind black dragonborn with the uh glowbird as a familiar. Oh yeah. I totally remember that. It Not was, really. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Is that is that the one rolling to like red mind? Yes. Okay, you but you remember specifically a vision of snow. And as you guys settle, it begins to snow around the campfire and just all around you in the desert. And while this is not too far off for something as cold as a very cold desert, it's odd when it begins to snow heavier. A lot heavier. To the point where each of you are about an ankle's deep worth in snow and sand. And it's not even coming down particularly hard. It's just quick. By all of the spellcasters, Roll checks pertaining to your ability mod, your spell mod. Oh boy, time to roll. So one now. time. How how I do? I got a net twenty. The only one who didn't, the only ones who didn't fail are Tycho and Karak. 
you feel your magic shift inside you, like it's almost being pulled out of you. It remains, but north, uh, e no, eastish of you towards the killer rail. It feels like it's being drawn there. That night, each of you have a dream. It is a odd dream, to say the least. For the hosts, it's not the creator you see, and for the non-hosts, you just see a different individual for each of you. And Cherry just sleeps soundly. No, this is everyone. Oh. For Tycho, you see a black and white armor clad individual staring out over the desert that that surrounded you in your waking and you feel soul being drawn to it make a arcana check It takes you a minute to realize it, but whoever this person is, is what soul is made out of. Cherry, you are in a laboratory, a very old one, something you'd imagine would be, oh, it's almost like a dwarven laboratory back where, back home. But it's a lot older, a lot more archaic. Not nearly as many as computers or even just guns in general. But you see a man in a fine tailored suit with this robotic arm that just seems to be working on creating something. Roll an Arcana check. Hey, Arcana just happens to be intelligence. 19. You realize that whatever Maxine is made out of is this person. You gotta roll for Stray. Stray also realizes this. Korak. You are in the middle of a very lush forest. This large, metallic, it appears to be a dragon of some sort, just tearing apart trees and destroying rocks with a single fell of its gigantic fucking fist. It is an intense sight to watch. Roll an Arcana check. Okay, Arcana. Yeah, I don't know shit. It's a three. Not piecing it together. Ellis, you are what appear to be in the clouds, or just some golden plain with fluffy white ground. Um, in front of you, you see a what appears to be a celestial, though a different looking one, rocky looking skin um, that almost appears to be natural armor. Um, same material of wings jutting from its back. And you see it hold out, hold out its hand, and just this magnificent golden bow appears around its hand, and it draws it, uh, its other hand back and looses a uh, arrow of radiant energy out towards nothing. More than kind of check. Um, you also managed to piece together whatever cherub was made out of is this individual. 
Lenore, you are in a deep, dank cave. In front of you, not necessarily staring directly at you, but past you, is this white-masked, white-cloaked individual with a large halo surrounding it. A large what? Halo. Mm. And without speaking a word, just a number of undead rise from beneath its feet. And it just it carries it off past you. Roll an arcana check. Internet, stop breaking, please. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're loading. We're loading the character sheet up. I'm sorry. You're good. So, uh... Knowing what I know about the nature of artifacts, I have a theory. You realize that whatever Bloodwood is made out of is this person. Cool. Each of you wake up the next day covered in snow. That is if you didn't go under tents. Um, if you did, your tent is covered in snow. Though it is very quickly melting as the coming heat is very quickly just turning a lot of the sand into mud. What is your theory, Cleo? Oh, because artifacts are like the fragments of souls that have been torn up when they like died. Vandalisk just like reassembling the people the artifacts come from. You don't know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> when the DM oh, says no comment. Uh-huh. Oh, well, maybe? A thousand <laughs> copies of Cherub says bullshit. Mmm. <laughs> well, like... Hmm. But is... But is there, like, any precedent that, like... It can't be copied? Even if it's... Is there a precedent? Is there a precedent we would know about? Mm-hmm. All of this, out of character speculation. Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Everyone, everyone roll your artifact rolls. Oh, ye chance to get Bladeo Wed back. Ah. That reminds me, do we have any idea when we're, like, allowed to use our limit breaks? That may or may not have been, may or may not have been the beginning of it. Oh, yeah. Which means that it is. I'll tell you when you guys are able to use them. I really need to finish mine. <laughs> oh. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Oh, yeah, it's fine. I have pushed it yeah. on, so... Did I fail again? No, I didn't no. fail again. You did pretty good. So the DC's 10? Correct. Then I win. So I got my go. Or not I succeed, I win. Game's over. He won. <laughs> Dang. I got a 14. Sorry, I we'll have to pack it up and end the campaign. Korok wins DM the game. Down. <laughs> Korok wins the game. Campaign is over. <laughs> um, <clears throat> he took the campaign. <laughs> yeah. Just one night Korok wakes up and accidentally shoots the continuance. End game. <laughs> Two of us sure already shot the continuance. Yeah, we tried that. It shot back. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, to be fair, he's like, hmm, an unknowable eldritch abomination type thing, which is probably the source of all magic. Shoot it. Okay, I smited it. 
Like, he kind of got Jerry doesn't know the... shit about anything about magic at all, so... Stray did shoot it. <clears throat> um... Didn't quite work out very well. No. Good effort, though. So, continuing onwards. Can I just have you guys roll one more artifact check to see what the result is for the last day? Can I just count the when I rolled two? Sure. Thanks. Right there. I'm good. The good news is, right when we get to the Desolessa Raid, is either right when we're going to have combat, or right before we have combat. Hopefully. With this combat, we insta lose. Depends on who the combat's with. That's bad. That's true. So. If it's with Desolessa, then yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have, I wouldn't even bother having you guys roll initiative. <laughs> Rock fall, everyone dies. Yeah. Yep. Dragon rolls over. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Just it got uncomfortable in its current position and decided to move a little bit. You're all dead. We roll new characters. <laughs> Dragon yawns, we roll new characters. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Dragon's volcanic breath opens. You're all drowned in lava. Um, Stretches wings. You're all impaired, impaled. Jesus Christ! I can't talk. Your speaking ability is impaired. <laughs> um. Anyways, over the course of the next two days, the weather during the day drops dramatically to the point where it's snowing day in day out. Is on the second day? Uh, or the third day? Over the past two days. Okay. Uh, Lenore's gonna use shape water so that wherever she steps in like a 30 feet circle around her, all the snow melts so she doesn't get wet. Okay, you can do that. Um, as you guys near the Desolvesa range, roll. Perception checks. Oh, if any of us don't, don't perceive the giant dragon, this perception whiz. Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, dang, time to fail. Mm hmm. I didn't mean to roll that twice, but 20 they did. zero whiz squad. <laughs> so. At 20, I see everything. Nat 20, 23, 13. But I hate 20. asking, but do I have to? Do you have to? Do you have to what? Roll because passive is 20? Yes. Okay. Uh, my passive perception is actually 24. Well, congratulations. Lenore has a heart attack. <laughs> God, I wish. Anyways. Anyone who rolled above a 15... It's not actually 24. Yeah, I know. Um, anyone who rolled above a 15, which is just... I, I did. Okay. I got with a 17. So half the party did. Um, as you guys near the Desolessa range and get closer to the mountains, you can see... <laughs> things moving across them. And as you guys get closer, you realize that these are in fact dragons. They are in varying degrees of hugeness. Some are small wormlings, others are the size of ancients. Um, a number of them are a variety of different colors, but most of them tend to have this reddish hue to them. And just anyone who rolled above a 20, which is just, what did you roll, Korak? 17. Okay, so just 
Stray, and Tycho. You actually realize that some of these mountains are actually moving, as if the mountain range is actually breathing. Just a very... Oh, I don't like that. Just a very gentle up and then back down movement. Is this a history thing Lenore could know, would know? All of you guys would know this. The, the dragon ranges are literally dragons. Okay. That is unsettling. Yeah, the dragon doesn't okay, have look. <laughs> um, look, I was under the assumption they were the corpses of dragons. No. They are living. Um, That's very unsettling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't wanna you don't wanna do a fight with these dragons. We already spoke with Falan. Mm-hmm. And that a was Falan range? Yep. Speaking right. of, we should probably right. not let Lenore speak with Desalessa. Oh no, she's talking to it. <laughs> so it's an ancient <laughs> dragon, she's talking to it. Hey, can I hear corpse if you die? <laughs> okay. Because that's a great thing to ask anybody. So. She literally asked to cut Ellis open, I don't think. Anyways, um, as you guys get within this, about 10 miles within the closest mountains to you, you see what appear to be essentially what is a flock of dragons lift off from the mountains and come in a flying V in your direction. Oh shit, guys! Did you know there's dragons here? No, I had no idea. It's almost as if it's called the Dragon Rain. Pardon? You guys look up above and you do see dragons ranging across the spectrum, even colors that aren't normal breeds of dragon. Do they look like they want to fight? They look like they're looking at you for the time being. Tycho steps up, just trying to make I mean, himself keep... a bit more. Yeah. Giving himself, uh, like, a place of attention as the, like, I'm the one you should speak to. At the least, he's gonna be the one who dies if he screws up talking. Mm -hmm. But at least he has the highest charisma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the dragons comes in a pretty steep dive towards you guys, a few hundred feet off. And as it gets Cherry's kind of bugging out. As it gets closer, you see that it has this almost red crystalline skin, almost as if its, as if it's scales aren't scales, but they're, in fact, crystals. It lands with a very heavy thud, and you realize that this is probably one of the older dragons of the range. It's beautiful. As the dust clears... You see a person standing there walking towards you. The others all go and dives around you in a circle, and uh, not necessarily a circle, a semi-circle behind you. And none of those ones approach, and they stay in their dragon forms. Just keeping a very keen eye on you. You see uh, one that appears to be black with red crystalline. What's up? Smells good. It could definitely be stronger. It could be stronger, but it's really good. Good. That's what I need Sorry. Um, you see one that appears to have a purplish, this purplish uh, crystalline formation going down the spine of its back, a few crystals um, surrounding its eyes. A lot of these dragons aren't as big as the one that had landed and is coming towards you now, but they are definitely not to be fucked with they're younger adult sized and the one that approaches you is um tall live uh a number of tattoos around their body uh, not that any of them have any particular meaning uh, it's just very fine detailed lines that go across their arms and some over their face along with their hairline um these bright red eyes, just pure bright red eyes, 
looking at you, Tycho, and then looking at the rest. And they speak and say, what is your business here? We come with a message from a dragonborn by the name the Count of Fives. Here to ask for Desalessa's aid in solving a problem of an entire city being taken hostage. And why should Desalessa help? The dragonborn's affected. That's. We are here to ask for Desalessa's help in solving the problem for her children. First of all, the Count of Fives is a traitor to the range and to Desalessa. The fact that he hired strangers <laughs> to come to the range <laughs> to ask for help must mean he is in rather dire straits. Yeah, he sure didn't. He didn't mention that. He didn't mention that part. I'm gonna. Of course he didn't. Otherwise, he wouldn't. No. No. Well, delivered our message. Guess it's time to go. If I may, though. Are the dragon. The person who's taken over the city is an ancient pit fiend by the name of the Collector. I do not wish to offend, but it is possible that someone of his advanced age and skill might be able to pose a threat to portions of the dragon range. They stare at you for a second. And then they look to the other dragons, and the dragons slowly close in in that semicircle. Oh boy. Cut, cutting off your retreat. The collector, you say. That is correct. The collector and an army, thousands upon thousands, of identical beings under his control. Each Similar to one of our own. <laughs> Similar to Why one of our own, no one of our own, though that one of our own is not under his control. However, we are enemies of the Collector, regardless He's of. Not talking. But listen, our we're actions. just the messengers. Town Fives having a little bit of trouble. The figure looks between the speakers stay and, and they turn and after a very quick running leap they transform it back into their dragon form and fly off in the direction towards the water. Of the Why on earth would you ever think it was a good idea to tell them that the identical beings were based off of Ellis? It's Are you going to lie to a dragon? It's not lying, it's withholding information. Are you going to lie to a dragon? It's not lying, it's withholding irrelevant information. That's kind of I'm relevant. I'm pretty sure that's relevant. If they want to know what they're up against. It's they need to know they're up against an army of clones that each have an artifact. They don't yes. need to know anything that will cast doubt on us. Regardless, I think we're fucked either way. Stray just takes a seat in the sand, kind of just waving at one of the dragons. It... You guys are there for probably a solid hour. Just letting the snow fall on you. The dragons barely even move in this time. Just all staring at you, almost entirely unblinking. A few of them do settle in their spots, but none of them move away from where they are. 
And after Lenore's going to turn the snow purple because she's bored. And after a moment, or after a while, you see that the mountains stop shifting. Stop moving in their place. This subtle breathing that you couldn't hear before becomes louder. And there is this low growl that shakes almost the entirety of the earth beneath you, shifting the sand and the snow. And as this happens, the dragons back off. And after a moment, there is a flash of red and the sound of what sounds like glass shattering in front of you. In front of you is a... I'll just, I'll just pull our token out. One second. Make that girl big. There we go. Again, tall, lithe, piercing green eyes, very bright red hair, standing in front of you with the red-eyed individual. Who spoke of the Collector? Lenore raises her hand. What's your name? Lenore Maroe. The rest of you, what's your names? Tycho. Dornelis? Solomon. Uh, Korak. Sherry says her name, I'll say. And Stray says, Zanas Greyguest. She looks at Stray for a moment, almost with a flicker of recognition, before she turns back to you, Lenore. How do you know it's the Collector? I scried on him. You're an idiot. At the time, I was unaware he would be able to see it, but I do see that it was not exactly an intelligent move. And the Count of Five sent you? Correct. Though I can assure you there is no great love between us. All of you... Yes. Can someone remind me what the role for Zone of Truth is? Wisdom or Charisma? Charisma. Uh, I'll check that I have it on my sheet. Everyone roll Charisma. Are we meeting her projection? Yes. Um, charisma. Either roll Charisma saving throw or choose to fail. Stray chooses to fail. Choose fail. to fail. Choose to fail. Yeah, I'll fail. Uh, wisdom saving throw? Charisma. Charisma, zone of truth. I mean, it doesn't matter either way. Yeah. <laughs> but it really matters if you want to see... <laughs> see Daz's ass. She looks to you first, Tycho. Full name. Okay, out of character. Does Tycho know more than just Tycho, or is that, like, I don't remember the clan name if I ever made it? Uh, you did not make a clan name, so you can just go by Tycho if you wish. Tycho, last of a, second to last of a dead clan. She likes the ULS, full name. Dornelis Solomon, Knight of Temperance. She looks to you, Cherry. Full name. One second. It has been ages since I fucking look at her sign name. Oh. Uh, Cheryl Rockefeller, and uh, what a terrifying pleasure to meet you. 
She looks to you, Cork. Full name. Cork. That's the only name I've ever known. <laughs> she looks to Stray. Full name. Again, Stray says the Nas Grey Guest. Raise your hand if you're a caster. Lenore raises her hand. Ellis does also. Yeah, basically high as everyone. He can. Everyone except for Cherry. Except for Train. Right. Yeah, Cherry and Stray. Yeah, Cherry and Stray. Well, catch me doing any of that freaky shit. <laughs> which Language. one? Which one of you is under the clone? Which one of you is cloned? Ellis leaves his hand raised. Take your I might be the original. I don't know. Take your helmet off. Yeah, he takes off the helmet. She <laughs> stares at you, Ellis, and it is the hardest stare that has ever been stared at you before. He where, doesn't move where, like, at all. Where are you from? Vesserit. As far as I know. She sort of cocks her head and shifts in her split shifts in her space. Drop your artifact. Uh, well, it's kind of... Okay. Yeah, he, um, he slips the thing off of his arm. And yeah, he places it on the ground instead of dropping it. <laughs> She looks to the one of the dragons off to the side. It nods, picks up the pauldron in its mouth, and just sort of tosses it, tosses it over to her. She looks at it, stares back at you. You're a healer. Yep. What are the rest of you? I'm part dwarf, part gun. Chara gestures with her giant fucking laser blaster arm that's embedded with heat. Humorous. The rest of you speak up. She thinks I'm Necromancer. Shifter. Hacked magic. Paladin something. Not entirely aware. Sniper with a few extra abilities. Stray just says the guy who kills people. <clears throat> well. She lets the artifact fall to the floor. The collector is... to put it frank, and she looks to stray. An old enemy. If what you're saying is true, and not a lie by the count of fives, I have some personal investment in this. Lenore holds up a hand like she's asking permission to speak. Not like raise a hand like a student, but you know. Yeah. What? If I may, we have reason to believe that the Collector is also possibly in league 
with Alabaster, Vanderlisk, and Galcara. I'm pretty much set at this point. And under the guise of, I mean, quarantine, finger quotes, seems reasonable that the other quarantine city is the same. As you list off those names, the heat drastically rises to the point where some of the sand slowly turns into glass. The snow is entirely melted at this point. Vanderlisk. What is it exactly that you are doing that you owe favor to the Count of Fives? Something not worth it. We are escorting an artifact halfway across this continent and uh, needed to escape Embermore. Clearly. He's just lending us a ship since there's no train out of Embermore. And I kind of fuck things up at Embermore, but, you know. It's not well, to be fair, I think they were... They were kind of fucked up before you got there. To be fair. Frankly, I do think mentioning the Collector has saved your lives. Lenore just side-eyes Tycho. Tycho is side-eyeing Lenore as well. She's the one that mentioned it, you snake. <clears throat> Are you gonna lie to a dragon? Hey, she saved your life. Just so you are all aware. Should I see any of your faces again anywhere near my brood, you will not receive you will not receive the same courtesy. Do not come here again, your message has been delivered. Yes, ma'am. Permission to slit the five of nine's throat, call it a five, whatever his name is? No. Oh. Can I have my artifact back? She shoots you this glare before kicking it at you. And it's like full-on soccer kick directly at your chest. So, in, out of character, does Lenore? Would Lenore know how? Yeah, Lenore knows how artifacts are made. Never mind. Cause she tried to make one. Mm -hmm. Why uh, would you dodge so it? Now it's fifty feet behind you. It is 50 so feet. Little... It, like, <laughs> she has a strength of a million, so it's like, past the dragon that is behind you. <laughs> Why would you dodge it? Now it's further away from you. <laughs> because I would have died. Question. <laughs> You're a healer. Out of, char out of character or in character? In character. Okay. Cherry says, so point of order... Would it make us more or less likely to die if we were to mention Falon? Slightly less. We're working for Falon on, be on behalf of Falon. You know. Frankly, I can't kill you yet. Oh, it's good, <laughs> it's good to hear. 
appreciate that. Flan and I are acquaintances. Still, the fact stands, should I see any of you here again, you will die. My lady, if I may. She just kind of gives you this, like, bereaved look of what now? I merely wish to make sure you understand that it is imperative that you do not fall. Should the time come when one must make a choice between the city of Embermore and your own life, I would ask you to choose your life. You think I would risk my life to save you idiotic surface dwellers? You people, the one who came out from under the ground, stole this land from us. Your empire drove us to this. And she looks and she gestures past the mountains. I'm doing this to settle a score. I was perfectly content to remain underground. Then you should have. Leave. And with that, she disappears. The red-eyed dragon steps back up. She is gone. Uh, the red-eyed dragon steps back up. You will be escorted safely by two, uh, two of us. After that, should you return to the Desert Lesser Range, you will all die. No questions asked. Nor thoughts of your bereavement complied to. Leave. Don't come back. Understood. With that, again, that dragon runs, leaps, and takes off along with several other of the dragons, two of which stay behind. We start walking back. I do, at least. Yep. Alice, you do find your artifact again. Once you, once you guys start walking away, the dragons take off, and they can't necessarily slowly fly behind you, but they do circles around you as you guys walk through the desert. And each night, the dragons rest maybe a hundred feet away from you. In this time of traveling back, what would you guys like to do? Do the dragons ever land? They do. Cool, I'm gonna talk to a dragon. Oh. Which one? There is a blue, uh, purplish crystalline one, and one that has, that is somewhat feathered, but still has these orangish bright streaks of crystals that go down its side and uh, down its spine. Which one looks older slash more important? That would be the um, one with the orange crystals. It's uh, slightly, orange crystals. It's bigger than the other one is. Cool orange crystal boy. Okay. Slash grill. It raises its head as it as you approach. It squints its eyes. What? I was just wondering if if you were born before the humanoids moved underground no I was born before they came above ground hmm then perhaps we are almost the same age I can assure you I'm older. Fair enough. 
I simply wished to learn what life was like for dragons during that time period. You would know. Dragons, for a very short period of time, short being about 50 years, um, mm -hmm. lived alongside everyone that had came above ground. And then mm -hmm. there was an instant uh, involving a dragon and a settlement um, that was fairly isolated from the very large cluster of people that had inhabited Dry City at the time. Mm -hmm. The settlement uh, was wiped out by said dragon. And by because of this, the entire dragon kind was essentially pointed at by the Empire, telling them that every single one of them is bad and it was essentially a mission of genocide afterwards it was I meant well before underground oh before underground then you wouldn't know Not... no during the underground because uh, during the underground yes that's what I meant during the underground so that happened yeah uh, they say um We lived free across the continent. Not a single worry about your artillery. Worry of being captured. The death of our young and abduction of our eggs. We could mate freely outside of the dragon ranges. We could do as we wished, travel where we wanted. It was better than, it was better before the likes of you came above ground. Yes. I've had my experiences with somewhat decent ones, but they are few and far in between. It seems that's the one thing we can all agree on. Life was much simpler when we lived underground. It just stares at you. What? No comment? If I could have my way, you wouldn't be alive. Me specifically, or elves in general? Every surface dweller. I would gladly return underground to the way things were. But that's no longer an option, is it? You did it once before, you can do it again. No. I can never go back to the way things were. I have one other question. Since I came above ground, I've lived in Dry City. What happened? I don't mean what the Empire said happened. I want... I want to know what happened. Alabaster I betrayed his kind and drove the Empire to our extinction. That's what happened. That's fair. We've recovered. Carrie, in the distance, raises her glass and goes, Empire stinks, here, here. We have recovered since then, but because of that fledgling of a worm betrayed us, we do not have the freedom of movement. Alabaster will die soon. When he dies, when he dies, the rest of your being will slowly become under recompense. Hmm. 
my being in particular. The surface dwellers. While he may have been one of us, it was one of you who drove him to it. And how did they do that? They shift, sitting up on their hind legs. They indoctrinated him, drove him mad with promises of power, delved into the draconic, draconic breed, greed that some of us still have from our ancestors. He was promised power, and he received it. By betraying his own kind, he became what he is now. A dit bag. What she said. So... If Alabaster were to die, would it offend the rain should I make use of his corpse? <laughs> a traitor to a dragon is hardly a dragon. I can tell you no one in the Desolessa range will care what happens to him. I cannot speak for the others. Very well. I believe that's all, but if you ever re wish to reminisce about times gone by, you know where to find me. I'll be doing it with someone else. Leave me be. Trust me, darling, they won't be near as good as I am. just looks at you and then lays back down. Anyone else doing anything? I've got a thing. What's up? Uh, Ellis is going to talk to Tycho about the dream of sorts okay. hey Tycho mm. the other night I had this really 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 strange dream there was this thing had a bow was made of this weird looking metal um and I have this feeling that my my pauldron is made out of the same thing. Well, for once you and I share a dream and it's not the same one. Excuse me. Uh, I had something similar of sorts. I felt like the swords from being I saw in my dream but I don't really know much about the being I saw someone without color and felt that they were the origin of Tycho just kind of points at his arm this I see What was yours doing? Your being. Your well, it had dream. it had this strange-looking bow, and it fired an arrow made of what was probably the brightest light I have ever seen. I 
I assume everyone. Unless you guys are having it further away from the fire. That, that's whether or not Ellis started it close to the fire or not. I mean, El Ellis is cold, so he's going to be close to the fire. Alright, then so. everyone's hearing it. Hmm. My person was just kind of staring across this desert. No. This one in particular? Felt like this one. I remember having a vision <clears throat> about this desert. It was it was a very, very long time ago. Before, actually, it was before the event where uh, he looks up, he stares into the fire, and he says, it was before those beams fell from the sky. What did it entail? I don't know. It was just the snow. Maybe this is a step in the right direction. I don't know. Maybe. Everyone make I perception checks, please. Alright. Why is freaky magic junk always, like, dream-related? That's my question. Can you guys answer that for me? Why is magic giving people creepy dreams? Well, do I want to speak candidly and answer the question, or do I want to make a joke out of it? Holy <laughs> shit, I got a natural 20. <laughs> Wait, that was the wrong roll. Can I just keep my nat 20? Is it the same roll? It's a no, natural it's 20. <laughs> I rolled a 20. Roll <laughs> again. It's not the same roll. Oh, oh it's still a 19. All of you see it. What did you roll, Corey? Yeah. Modified 20. Okay. You see a black dragonborn step out into the light of the fire. You didn't even hear him coming. And he just takes a seat. The same glow, blur glow bird on her shoulder, blind in both eyes, clouded. Is that? It's Odysseus. Hi! <laughs> Do we, Does do any know? of the Dry City gang recognize this man? Um, Lenore and Lenore only. You can make a history check. O H. Gold woman powers activate. What was his name? Odysseus. Twenty-five. You do know who this is, Lenore. And he's a bit of an urban legend. Um, he is a clairvoyant who <sighs> you understand very vaguely that works for an organization that intends the downfall of the government and install installment of one of their own making. Well. He waves to... She's gonna keep that to herself. He waves to Ellis. It's a pleasure to see you again, young one, and I don't believe I met the rest of you, but I know who you are. You gonna eat us? Um, no! I'm not with the range. I have nothing to do with them. Though I figured you would be here. That still doesn't technically answer the question. 
I'm not a cat. Oh, no, Alright. What want a want a drink? Do you have any water? Yeah, we got yeah, we got water. Tycho shares some water. He <sighs> very easily takes the water. Just nods to you. And takes a sip of it before handing it back. So how do you all find your journey so far? Arduous. To be expected. Bit cold. Rather odd for this time of year, isn't it? It doesn't snow this hard until high winds. <laughs> You knew this was coming, though, did you not? I know everything. Hmm. They very... Yes, it appears many people are claiming that nowadays. The creator. He does this often. He points at... The hosts, Ellis, Tycho, and Cherry. The three of you have spoken to him, have you not? Mm -hmm. We have. Kana didn't He's have a last. choice. And I believe you have too, Miss Moreau. So, three of you are hosts. Along with the others, it makes a few hundred. And what goal has he set for the three of you? Vanderlisk's head on a pike. To reclaim you don't know the everything, huh? Hmm? Huh? Miss Rockefeller. Please, call me Cherry. As you wish. Cherry. I believe that you have somewhat of a vessel on your hands, correct? What do you mean? The crystal that you've been working on. Alice perks up. Yeah, I'm not really into the whole, like, crystal healing thing. It's not really my scene. You get a message. Telepathic. Not even one with Ava in it? Cherry just drinks. Stares him down. One second. Even he can't expect Cherry to respect <laughs> someone sending him magic. <laughs> sending him magic. Even one with Ada in it sounds like magical bullshit to me, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> there is exactly one person who sees anything magical that Cherry respects, and that is Jane. Cherry would rather she stick to gun. There yes. is going to be something waiting for you lots 
when you reach Veseret. Very large. Not to be uh, lewd or uncouth. It is rather fucking dangerous. Though. Explain. There's a large automaton. The successor to the ASC, I suppose I could call it. Core made of made of pure continuance magic. It's the only one of its existence. And if I may recommend to you, Cherry, that you destroy it. I believe killing such a thing will uh, make a mech scene better. You're a weird fucking dude, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. People have called me many different things, most of them weird, yes. I find it a compliment. You shouldn't. <laughs> I believe bitch and weird are two different categories. <coughs> and yet, not mutually exclusive. Damn, the NPCs are just are just tearing me apart today. Ooh. Do you have something you wish to say, Miss Moreau? Odysseus, how old are you? I've never quite known. And you will continue to wonder. You've existed for at least as long as I have, if I'm correct. Possibly more. And yet you do nothing. It is not my place. Of course not. Cowards never do seek to interfere. Rather neither sit, neither rather do observers. Sit, rather they sit behind a shady bureaucracy attempting to overthrow the government so they can replace one tyrant with another. You believe that, that is Odysseus's true goal. He laughs. Pretty hard. Says the tyrant of the group. I don't deny being tyrannical. As the good Dornellis stated, I am not a coward, I am merely an observer. I fill my library with the books of the past, the present, and the future. Many things have been passed down to me. I figure, at the, at the very least, I can lend my sight to something better. The knowledge in those books is meant to be used. What he just said, he's doing. Information should be free. Do not lend it to some random party you find the best suits your interests. Eleanor, mm. Le huh? God, Lenore, didn't you just say this man is just as old as you are? Yes. Then don't you think he knows what he's doing? I don't see what age has to do with it. Idiot. Then apparently you don't see anything inside. at all. 
Lenore. Do you wish to kill me? Do I wish to kill you? That's a complex question. No, it's not. It's a simple yes or no. No, but I would be very happy if you were dead. Respectable. Odysseus. Yes. I I think I think I can suffice. I think I can say for all of us that we've been having these dreams related to our artifacts. Ah, yes. Is that They are He points to you, Tycho. Latinia. Points to you, Cherry, Relic, Stray, Nevrin, Korok, Wreck, you, Alice, Seros, to you, Lenore, Yerlsein, all heroes or beings of some repute from the past. few of them have a few of their own stories, which sadly have been lost, but stories nonetheless. I suggest, should you and when you ever find yourself in a field of blue grass that you kill them with all your might. I believe once you do that, the behavioral issues that you've all been facing with them will cease and you will be able to break the limits of what they are capable of doing. A field of blue grass. Correct. You want to be more specific than that, or...? I, I simply saw a field of blue grass. Right, right. Cool. Sure. Has this ever happened to anyone? It's happened to a few. Thank you for the advice. You're welcome, Taika. Now, unless any of you have any other questions for me, I will be on my way. Oh, this uh, is. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, by all means, Lenore. Ask away. Well, my question will probably take some time, so... Mm, but I want to take our dear old man friend here for a walk, so... For a what? A walk. You know, a gentle stroll. Well, I don't trust that one bit. I think you're... The last person who should be talking about trust, but you know. Have I ever been anything less than honest in my t intentions? Yes. I suppose that's true. And regardless, I believe I can handle Cherry should she do anything uncouth. I do not like other people speaking for me. You don't have to worry, your virtue is safe. What is your question, Lenore? Have you any experience in helping to train... Have you any experience or interest in helping to train the next 
generation of great clairvoyance. Young Jane. Where we meet next, uh, I will take her. No. Truly. I don't believe I do you. not. I don't believe trust. you speak for her. I do not trust you to raise a child. And you trust yourself? Heavens no. Regardless, I trust. she will be receiving training. Well, then, I suppose, enjoy your stroll. If you don't mind me taking your arm, Miss Cherry, uh, my cane doesn't do well in the sand. Oh, that's alright. He takes your arm and lets you lead. So, um, after we've walked away from the nosy eavesdroppers. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, if I wasn't pretty sure you'd beat the absolute crap out of me, if you were anyone else, I would probably kill you. I am well aware of this. And I'm sure all-knowing, all-seeing, clairvoyant as you are, I don't really like people knowing my business. Oh, of course, no one should. And Cherry is swigging from a bottle as they walk. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, you called it a vassal. Yes. What do you know about it? From my understanding, once the dreadful explosion had been caused within the black site. Her soul was transformed into a small crystalline object. A piece of glass, I believe it was. She never truly died. That's what I've been saying. She was just turned into something else. Sure, yeah. And ever since coming into contact with the Ishali automaton known as Lockheed, its own artificial intelligence spurred a new segment of activity within the crystal. Her consciousness has been stirred, and she is what can be considered awake for a rock. When I talked to her, she was... screaming. It is... difficult for a soul to speak through machinery. But I believe the deal you made with the Creator should help in that process. So it was the connection that was causing her the pain. She's not just... She is not broken. It wasn't like some kind of AI virus that Locke gave her? No. And she's not just like... I shut off the connection because I thought it would it would turn her off. But if she's still screaming and I just can't hear it or is she I believe it was the connection itself not just being within the vessel as of now she is safe okay with oil 
future seeing. Do you see it being possible to to bridge that gap? Of course. And not hurt her? Yes, it will be difficult, but it is achievable. And why should I trust what you're saying? Will anything I say make you trust it? Tell me something I don't know. And if it's right, if I can confirm it, then... That's worked for me in the past. Are you telling me to glimpse it into the future and if something happens that I predict, you will believe it? Sure. He just kind of tugs on your arm to make you stop for a second, and just, even though he is blind, he just kind of stares off into the middle distance. And after a moment, he just kind of pushes you along and starts walking again. Tomorrow. Just as the sun rises, Ellis will find his revolver gun. One of the dragons sitting by your camp will have taken it as a little trinket to have. All right. And, uh, do be careful of any abolefs you see while on the boat. Oh, gee. Oh, good. Goody. Great. Good. Thanks for the heads up. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so is your whole deal, like, you know shit, and you, like, turn up at random campsites and tell people stuff? He sort of just kind of bobs his head side to side. I... Do things as I please. Help those I feel... Might need a push in a direction. Mm. And, uh... I guess one last question, if you don't mind. Of course. You know about the creator. I do. Is he trustworthy? In past experiences, most beings of the creator's power have... No... Hold on. Gila forgot a word. No... Intention of lying as they do not need to. Would I call the creator trustworthy? No. Do I think he will keep his word? Yes. He'll deliver on the deal. Yes. Mm, that's all that matters. There is one other warning I should give a note to you. 
Should you ever meet a man calling himself Valamin, do not believe what he says as he is a fake. Well, as you can attest, I don't tend to take people at their word very easily, but um, I appreciate the warning. You are welcome. I do believe it is time for me to go. That's fair. Hope you enjoyed the little stroll. Rather cold. Mm. And with that, he lets go of your arm and just walks into the desert. What a weird motherfucker. You return to the camp. You all go to sleep. Ellis, roll a perception check. Oh boy. You notice it when you wake up. The revolver that had been in your holster on your hip is gone. Where's my gun? He looks to everyone. Hey, so you remember that gun? You know, it's a kind of like a revolver, but it's a pistol. Have you seen it? Nah. Nah. Just to use magic. I don't know that spell, Lenore. For God's sake, she casts Locate Object. It is currently resting in the gut of one of the dragons. <clears throat> Are you fucking kidding me? Which one you is wanna, it? <laughs> you wanna hang out with the dragons for another day and wait for it to come out the other end? It's the ancient one. The <laughs> gold crystalline one. Wow. That's... Mm. That's a thing. Ellis is gonna walk up to it, and he's gonna say, um, Hi! Uh... I think you have something that belongs to me. <laughs> it, it looks at you, and it just smiles, and then it takes off. Oh... We're about to fight. We're about to fight. We'll get you a new revolver. Oh no, this is happening. Oh my god. We did it. I'm not being part of this. How far is it away from me? You're going to fight. I restrain and... him. Uh, Stray will I... help you with this. I restrain him. With. With my. Get dunked. Yeah, let's cast freedom of movement. <laughs> uh, does that what what does that require? I don't think you can do it while grappled. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Is Trey still going it's towards fine. the dragon? No, Stray is not helping Ellis. He's helping Cherry. Uh, Stray was. No. <sighs> Ellis is just cursing. We'll get you. Slews of curse, curses and, and just, yeah. 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 Not I happy. If the price for safe passage for in the dragon was a single revolver, I think that's a fairly good deal. But the, he could have taken your gun, Lenore, not mine. No, he wouldn't have eaten Bodea well. Aren't you a smith, Dornell? Yes, that was yeah, the first. 
Magic up another first one. first gun I've ever made. Okay. Trust me, in a thousand years you'll have forgotten that you ever even made that gun. Oh, shut up. There, there. You big sentimental baby. The Ender Dragon is just kind of laughing as it watches. <laughs> I'd say ask nicely, hope for the best. Otherwise, <clears throat> you know, do what none of us are good at. Get over it. <laughs> you guys continue on. There, there. The ancient dragon leading ahead of the other one. As the town gets in sight, the dragons circle once, twice over it before heading back to the ranch. One of the townsfolk um, comes up to you, a little old, wrinkled, tanned. You wouldn't have hit it. It would have been funny if you did, though. Um, kind of comes up to you and says, uh, What did you go to the range for? Apparently to be disrespected. Business. To get laid. They... One dragon told us to ask about another dragon because the first the coward. And then another stole my gun. They didn't steal it, they ate it. Stole. Ate. Same thing. It was stolen before it was eaten. Was it, it was taken in the middle of the night. I'm pretty sure that's thievery first. Was it the golden crystalline it's... one? I guess. Soranus. He has a hate for us people. Us people? Surface dwellers. We're one of the few that can live under the range by Dezalez's decree. So it's... you knew that they were totally gonna probably kill us? We did. We normally let strangers go to their deaths. <laughs> the fact that you have come back alive is rather surprising. So Thanks for the food. Thanks you... for the water. You've been complicit in multiple murders. Good to know. It's not murder. At the very most, it's assisted suicide. What your elvish friend said. No, they can commit the murders and you're complicit. Because you allow it to happen. Yes. Does that mean that you are complicit? I'm pretty sure trespassing is... Uh... Sitted. Legally gray. What? Also, when you're big and old enough, you can just say fuck the law and do pretty much whatever you want. There, there are no laws out in the fucking badlands. That's the whole fucking point. What your friend said, there is no law out here. <laughs> if people want to also, go and see, if people want to go and see the desert lesser range, we help. We. Let them. Give them food and water. We stay under the protection of Desalessa while the idiots go and die. I mean, I don't know what people would expect when trespassing on a dragon's land without reason. They kind of deserve their death. I mean, for whatever reason, the mountains were beautiful and yeah, terrifying. Yeah, was. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I knew it was good. Regardless. Get out of here. Taiko drops a coin. Just like tosses it to the guy. She takes a coin. Looks at it. Tosses it back to you. We don't deal in money. 
Alright. What do you deal in? Protection from dragons. I think he just said that. And fish. I'm gonna guess fish is the other thing. Fish and something else none of you have. Jerry just died. Standards? <laughs> no. Okay, this is starting to get real creepy spooky. I'm outie. It's probably common sense, considering we went to a dragon. But, you know. <laughs> Let's go. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. You're kind of shepherded by this old lady, who <laughs> appears to be, like, the town head, almost. And if any of you guys stop, she just kind of prods you with her cane to keep going. You guys are uh, back on the boat. The skulls seem to have been teaching Jane how to fire a gun. I'm so okay. proud. Um, they don't let her keep one, but they were teaching her. Um, Somebody give this child a pistol. I'll make one myself. It's fine. And you guys set off towards Vesrit. <laughs> sure. Can I... Let me look up this word to see if it's correct. Can I accost Count of Fives? What do you mean? Can I go up to him and say... Oh, he's back. You here. nearly got us killed, you bastard. Oh no, Count of Fives isn't with you. Oh. Yeah, no. Oh, I didn't know that. No, he he left as soon as we agreed. Yeah. You guys have some of his crew with you, but you don't have Count of Fives. <laughs> and the and the crew are specifically just for the ship. Yeah. Okay, then I'm not gonna mm. I'm not gonna harass one of the crew members. No, yeah. but I will flirt with them. Of course you will. I mean, that's I what you're doing. I still can't get over the mountains were beautiful. Yeah, she was. <laughs> Prettiest mountain I ever damn seen. So, I'm going to end the session there. But, yep. um, I will either have another session sometime this week to explain what happens while you guys are on the ship on the way to Vesrit, or... An abolith is my guess. Uh, there will be no combat on the ship, but you guys do see a few aboliths. Um, but, uh, as this is a very long travel time, I'm just going to fast forward a bit. If something happens with NRP that I need to run a session on, um, I will essentially stop whatever RP is going on and tell you guys to get on. Or I will run another session with a whole bunch of things that go on go on for the month's worth of travel that is that it is to Vesrit. Uh, but other than that, pretty much just plan what you guys might do on your downtime while on the boat. Um, RP, okay. RP what you want, and uh, that's pretty much it.